what's up guys um, today we're gonna cover this uh, twitch stream and I got a couple of uh, timestamps I don't want to go through the entire video it's a little long there's a lot of stuff that I covered in yesterday's video so I'm just gonna cover the kind of new stuff and important stuff so let me see we'll get this started this is going to be the stat stats breakdown. breakdowns that we have. So uh, there's stats now in the career mode, much more in-depth stats available. So certainly uh, we are expecting uh, people will probably make good use of this. Uh, you can track all of your stats across all of the different series. Of course, just like with the previous games, you could run the, uh, the different series and you can do those simultaneously and you can track your statistics for all of those. You can also uh, track statistics for other drivers as well, too. Let's uh, switch over to Cup Series, actually. And you can see... So, this is the official stat layout. You got seasons, your ranking, starts, polls, wins, top fives, top tens, laps led, laps completed, average start, average finish. Uh, I got no problems here. This is the way it should have been done all along, and it's finally here. So I'm happy with this. This is, you know, let's never go back to a time where there's no stats. Let's never go back to where it's been in the past two years with just minimal, you know. This is the way it's supposed to be done. Let's keep this moving forward. For example, how Danny Hamlin is doing um, at the moment and yeah. uh, versus previous good. seasons as well. Um, so we've got all of those. The other thing is you're going to be able to follow the AI stats throughout your own career, which is big. I uh, didn't even occur to me to even talk about that stuff earlier. But, yeah, this is important, too. You know, as you move along in your career, you're going to be able to track the rest of the uh, field and and you know how they're doing in their career so that's cool i like this this is it's about time different stats in there and you can go through and you can look at absolutely every single every single driver are you back elliot i am back sorry <laughs> i uh, seem to have already started with some technical difficulties as we will happen to do right as i started the stream too i mean there was no going back at that point so i went i yep. did i did go ahead and start we already covered over the uh, the main menu stuff uh and uh we mentioned i mentioned already that we have all of the 2020 cup content except for one driver who of course has been replaced by you i, I in fact actually introduced you as bobby carter but this is in fact elliot henderson developer on nascar heat 5 um so yeah do you want to talk a little bit about uh the career stuff that that i'm going over yes yeah, so now uh the guy that's running this this uh, stream his name is justin he's the one that got in touch with me earlier this year and a uh, very nice guy he emailed me he got me in touch with uh, steve hood the president of the company so uh i just want to reiterate that i do i think these are very nice people i think their their intentions they have good intentions you know it's hold on a second it's up to us as a community as as consumers to remind them of what we want and what we don't want um so they have certain goals you know this esports thing is not going to go away i'll talk about that more down the line but you know, you can still do both. You can still deliver a fully fleshed out career mode. You know, I mean, Formula One is doing it, right? They're involved in esports. They they give you online racing, but it hasn't gotten in the way of providing a fully fleshed out career mode. So let's just move forward. So career mode, obviously a lot of people have been asking for stats and a little bit more depth there. So as, as Justin showed off a second ago, you can go through and see AI stats and your own stats per year, per season, um, and per series, and just kind of get a glimpse of what has happened over uh, each driver's I like that. Uh, career while they've been in NASCAR heat for the last few seasons. This so is good. anybody trying to play through career mode and provide some type of storyline to it can go in here and poll generated stats uh, from previous races and stuff and actually have a little bit more to look at and, and go from when they when they try to do that type of stuff. Um, but we can also touch on a little bit of Bobby Carter as well. 
before he moves forward with this, because I have something to say about this too, but um, I, I, I'm happy with the stats. This is what we've been asking for. Uh, and I love that you can follow the AI's career as well. Um, I do want to see, you know, he talked about, you know, having a story, like being able to follow your career using stats. That to me is, is just part of the story. You got to, you know, forget about this game. I'm talking about next gen future. You have to create a uh, presentation that works with the stats, right? They uses the stats as a narrative to follow your career. So have pre-race and post-race commentary, uh, other types of presentation. Maybe when you're negotiating contracts, these stats can come up as a form of, you know, as a bargaining chip. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can implement these stats into the actual game presentation so that the stats, I don't want it to be something that's just hiding in a folder just for you to go look at. I want it to have an active role in the game. Let's say you you reach 50 wins. I want the game to notice and let and, and bring it up through presentation, pre-race or post-race commentary, and just hey, this guy just got his 50th win and blah blah blah. You know, there's so much you can do in 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 future presentation where you can implement. I want these stats to be more than just something that's hidden away. But this is good. I'm not complaining. This is great. So this is a, a really good step forward. But I'm looking at the future. Well, if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, uh, I've prided myself for a while of trying to make sure that we had full rosters in the game. It's been a big thing since Evolution. Anybody that played the EA games has, uh, you know, realize that that's been a, la a large focus for us um, to try to make sure that we have, you know, full rosters in the game. Uh, unfortunately, with uh, with how this year has gone, um, we missed out on some key drivers. Uh, we happened to grab Joey Gase from Rickware Racing uh, to fill in as the 39th driver, but we couldn't gather assets quick enough to get it into the game um, prior to ship. So, we are still talking with uh, with Rickware Racing and uh, BJ McLeod and other Cup guys that have come up since uh, since the season's gone. All right, I just want to stop for a second. There have been people talking about like this Bobby Carter made up thing and whatever. First of all, this paint scheme looks awesome. I love this. The only change I would make is either make the wheels white or green. Probably white would look better. It would really pop. But I love this paint scheme. As for these drivers, I'm going to say something, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree. When it comes to signing all of these guys, making sure that everything's licensed, licensing is a big issue with these games. And I've always been a proponent of, you know what, if it's too difficult to uh, get sponsors or certain drivers you know, into the game. Don't be afraid to just use phony stuff. Like, this does not bother me at all. It doesn't change the the gameplay experience. You're still racing the same amount of cars on the track. If some of them have to be filled out by fantasy drivers, made-up sponsors, who cares? It's just more stuff, more content in the game. And at some point, as a developer, and, and look, I'm, I, might, I might be talking out my ass because I'm not a developer. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But I think people focus a little too much. Like, they'll complain, oh, who's this Bobby Carter guy? Blah, blah, blah. You don't hear me complain about stuff like that because that's not important. You know, it's, it's another competitor on the track. As long as you're not racing against 36 cars and there's a bunch of cars missing because you couldn't sign specific people, use phony sponsors, use phony drivers. There's nothing wrong with that. We had stuff like this years ago. So you have to, as a developer at some point, 
hold these people to the fire and say, listen, you don't want to be in the game, that's on you. Or if you're a sponsor, you're giving me a hard time to get the licensing, you know, signed. Hey, you're, you're the one losing out, not me. You're getting free uh, advertising in a video game. These sponsors should be paying you for that privilege. But you have to chase them around. You got to beg them to sign on the dotted line. Listen, man, if let's say Eminem said to me, yeah, you know what? Uh, they're making demands or they're giving me a hard time. I say, screw that. You know, if this can't be in the game, I'll use a fake sponsor. And if I can't use a specific driver, I don't care. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but this stuff doesn't bother me. You know, there are things that bother me. This is not one of them. I don't care if they're using fake sponsors or fake drivers. As long as it's a full field and, and, and the competition is there and the gameplay is good, this stuff doesn't really matter. And this car looks pretty fucking badass. This is better than most of the paint schemes, in, you know, from the, the real life drivers. I got no problem with this. So this is something I do see in the community every once in a while where people will complain over stuff like, oh, who's Bobby Carter? I don't care, man. You know, do what you have to do to push the game forward. Don't be a slave to corporations or to these sponsors. You know, if, if they're giving you a hard time, I would say to them, there's the door. You're the one missing out on free advertising. They should be begging you to be in the game. So, I again, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I'm not a marketing expert. I'm just a consumer. But that kind of shit bothers me. You know, how important is it to make sure you have every specific sponsor and driver in the game? Listen, man, if, if they're giving you a hard time, if it's causing a problem with the development of the game... Don't be afraid to move forward and say, we'll just, we got phony sponsors and drivers ready to fill these spots. It, to me, does not hurt the game. Yeah, I want all the official stuff. That's great. But it's, it's, to me, it's just not on my top list of priorities. And somebody needs to remind these sponsors, um, you're the one getting free advertising in a game. I, you, I shouldn't have to be chasing you to get you into the game. So I don't know what else is going on in the background. And I'm sure there are things I'm not aware of. I'm just throwing that out there. I really don't care. So let's move forward. It's changes. And we hope to add in more drivers, maybe replace like Bobby this. Carter with an existing driver <laughs> um, to, you know, fill that field out. But... Uh, we do have some other drivers down in the Xfinity and Truck Series that Justin can show off that we can uh, talk about quite briefly with uh, Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott. Ah, yes. I believe we should have Kyle's Xfinity car in here. You can hit next group, bud. There you go. So there's his, uh, his number 54 Twix car. Um, so I know, uh, trying to get these cup guys in the, in the lower tier series is always, uh, a positive for fans cause they want to drive as Kyle Busch and you know, Chase Elliott and other guys. Um, I know a lot of people are asking about Dale Jr. It's, it's not an avenue that we've looked into quite yet, but we are trying to, uh, you know, get more drivers into these lower series. So you'll see Kyle Busch in the Xfinity wow. series and that looks got nice. Kyle and, uh, Chase both. I would the make the wheels orange well. though. So uh, that's that, that orange into the wheel. He drove, um, wow, at, uh, at Atlanta. So we're uh, we're definitely trying to get more drivers in and uh, and and get deeper rosters in here. Unfortunately, the Cup Series this year with with the limited drivers running, uh, we've we have failed you on that. Thirty nine out of forty, but we are adding BJ McLeod and uh, trying to talk to Rick Ware about getting their other drivers. And See, this is what I'm talking about. We every year we hear these problems. You know, he says we failed. Just as long as the you've got a full field, give me some phony drivers. I don't care. It's not that big a deal to me. I don't speak for the whole community. You guys could chime in. Is this a, a life or death thing for you that we got to have specific drivers? And, and we hear these problems every year. This 
causes uh, a big delay in these games. If they could just not have these delays over stuff like this, they could address other things. I mean, that's just me. And as with previous games, of course, um, we are expecting to add more and more schemes as we go. Of course, we've got the 2020 schemes, but, you know, there's been those one-off schemes and stuff like that that we're expecting to add later on. Yes, certainly. And uh, just touching back, uh, just to wrap up on career, um, we, d we did have uh, some slight improvements on career this year as well, too, um, coming in the form of AI let's say they're a little bit more equal, some some stability when it comes to the, the AI difficulty in career mode and other, well, not outside of career mode as well, too. And also the DNF feature as, uh, as well now. Yeah, so with career mode, we've, we've talked about in other streams and videos that um, as you play through, there's a little bit of, uh, of an inconsistency between tracks going to, I like to point out Atlanta and Richmond specifically, but... Um. I think this is what they meant when they improved the AI. And unfortunately, I was, I don't know where I got that idea, but I thought maybe you would see some more dynamic stuff like maybe running different lines and, and moving around a bit, making mistakes. Uh, but I just think they were talking about the difficulty, right? And they brought up Atlanta and Richmond because they're kind of polar opposites. Richmond is really difficult. And Atlanta is really easy. Atlanta is one of my favorite tracks. So I'm glad that they're addressing that and they're going to bump it up. But they're, you know, they're, they're right. There's an inconsistency from track to track on the difficulty, right? This is just a big disparity. Like some race, some tracks are very challenging while others just aren't. And if they can actually even all that out, that's a good thing. I just don't want to see the game overall get easier. As hard as Richmond is, you know, with a good setup, you know, it's pretty challenging and it's 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 fun. I'm not sure I'm crazy too I don't feel too I'm, I'm not too crazy about, you know, dialing that one back a bit. We do have lower difficulty settings. Um and you know, if they got rid of that legend hard stuff and just go by the 105 104 uh, ratings you could really dial it in to your preference i'm not a fan of just taking like richmond and just you know bringing the, the challenge down it might work it might not i'm just i'm a little afraid of that we'll see what happens um when you do hot seats when you go to a track like atlanta in the truck series with a tier three team a three-star team um it, it it feels too easy compared to what it would um you know ideally at another track so we've we've enhanced that and changed it so that more uh, the tracks are a lot more consistent overall so when you do go to atlanta with a three-star team it doesn't feel too much different than you know something like chicagoland or kansas uh where you know you won't be getting you won't hopefully be easily winning a short race at Atlanta with a three-star team as you could previously. Um, and then Richmond was also really, really hard prior, and we've uh, we've changed that so that it's a little more consistent with the other tracks as well. That's the one that scares me a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. Let's wait and see what happens. You know, hopefully, you know, I just, as long as every track is consistently challenging at the top level, I'm okay. Because um, that was another another major issue with the track consistency. And then uh, just moving on to the other race modes. So, if, um, again, we have this condensed menu now. If you go over to race modes, this is where you'll access the test session. All right, they're going to talk about test sessions. I'm going to skip that. So I'm going to go to the next because, I, 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 you know, we know enough about that. So let's see. Next on the list, because I am going down a list, it just so happens to be, it is in fact the paint booth. So uh, people who were who are asking for that. Um, so we there are some small improvements, some updates, uh, just things in general. Uh, Elliot, go ahead and talk us through that as well. Yeah, the quality of life here was kind of the biggest thing. Um, the paint schemes are the same as what they were last year. We're going to implement more of those as we go forward um, through DLC packs. That's a red flag, and that is, this is where I'm going to be critical. 
I talked about in the last video that we're going to have to wait for templates. But I wasn't aware, I really didn't, I thought it was just going to be updated as, you know, you know, put into the game as an update. But what he just said now, it's part of DLC. Which means if you don't buy the DLC packs, you're not going to get new templates. You're stuck with the old templates. That bothers me. So, and let me know, guys. I really want to know, am I being fair? Do you think, do you guys think I'm too critical or that I'm too nice? Or am, am I might be, I'm trying to be fair. Because when they're doing something right, I point it out and, and I tell you I like it. And when I see something I don't like, I'm, I'm trying to let you know this is not cool. Um, and I just, I'm curious to know if you guys think I'm being fair. As long as you, you think I'm being fair, I'm good. I, I'm, I really want to, I want to see these guys do well. And I do think that they're, they do have the best of intentions. Nobody wants to make a shitty game. I'm sure they want to push this thing and, and do better. But it's business decisions like that that really bother me. Because that is a terrible decision. You're charging full price for a game that we all know already. It's... A, it's an update to last year's game. It's not the type of improvement we've seen in the past two years. So it's all you're already uh, really taking liberties with your community, with the fan base, with the, your consumer base, by telling them, "Listen, just you know, we're charging you the price of a full game." But on top of that, uh, something people want. I, you know, they want more choices when it comes to customization. And the templates are probably the biggest thing. And you're telling us that they're going to come in the future as part of DLC packs. That's a huge red flag. And that's not okay. I can't co-sign that. That is, I'm not happy about that at all. That's bullshit, to be honest. You couldn't just update this stuff down the line and just say, don't worry, this is going to be update no it's part of the dlc pack you know why because dlc pack uh, these packs are not worth anything it's just dlc paint schemes for the ai and whatever that you could use but there's no real value there for what you pay and these all developers are doing it there's, i'm not singling them out but this is what's ruining the the gaming industry and they're just squeezing you for more and more. And now, if you want some extra templates, you got to pay for it. It's part of DLC packs. I, I'm not okay with that. That's not cool. And I don't care how what excuses anybody comes up with. That's unacceptable. I'm not buying these DLC packs. I'm not doing it. I don't care how much I might want some new uh, templates. I don't believe in this business model. And if you're not giving me enough value in the main game that I'm paying for, I'm definitely not going to reward you by buying DLC packs. I'm not doing it. And you're free to do what you want. You know, I'm talking to the community. You want to buy, keep supporting this business model? That's up to you. I'm not doing it. I, I did say I would support these guys. I'm going to buy this game. But I'm not buying the DLC packs and... This is just, it's, this is not good. It's not a good look. And if you want people to trust you as a developer and to stick with you and support you, this is not the way to do it. So some people might say, this isn't the end of the world. It's not that big a deal. All of these things matter. I'll talk a little more about it in a minute. Um, but the biggest thing is you get down towards the number, you can see the difference here. Um, that's obviously separated from the font. Uh, what we've done is we've included more fonts and allowed for more customization of the number. Um, so instead of scrolling through a 400 page uh, list of numbers, you can <laughs> just scroll through, pick your digit and then pick your font. Um, again, we'll, we'll definitely plan on updating more fonts and adding more fonts as we can with each DLC patch. Um, and then... So even getting new fonts in the future 
is going to be part of DLC packs as well. And from here, you can change the fill, but also the uh, the shadow of the number. So now this is something I've always wanted. OK. I know some of these color they're using bad color combinations. That's why it doesn't look all that great. You know, if you pick the right color combos and it goes with the rest of the scheme, it, I, I promise you this will look a lot better. Uh, not this font, but, you know, that whole, you know, outline shadow and inner, inner part of the number. Now, a lot of the complaint last year was just the minimal uh, aspect of being able to edit the number. Now you can go in and actually change the shadow and make it make it pop a little bit more. Uh, the material for the car can be changed from gloss to matte. Um, that's something that internally we've wanted to do for a little bit and never really had the uh, resources to do it. That looks um, good. So that was something that we looked into this year to nail down. Uh, as I mean, between... That looks good. I like that. I really do. The matte look, I, I, I'm really liking that. You know, the Chip Ganassi car is typically running like a matte finish. Um, it, it's just a nice piece to add in so you can differentiate yourself a little bit more. Um, we've added deeper rim and spoiler colors. Uh, actually, I don't believe the spoiler was able to be edited last year, but the rim color used to be just a set of, I believe, eight or ten different colors. Now you can use the regular color. This is good, but I'm surprised that they didn't say that this option to be able to color the wheel any color you want, as opposed to last year, is going to be, you know, part of a DLC pack. I'm surprised they didn't do that. At least they, they're letting you do that here. Picker and uh, choose whatever you want so that you can match your car now. Um, so that's a little bit deeper uh, modification there. And then the spoiler color is just the same way, which is uh, similar to how Penske and, and other teams utilize the spoiler color of their car. Now you can change that on your car as well. Oh, yeah. I've, I'm a big fan of the mat in particular. Every... All right, I'm going to move forward to the next major topic. All right. I didn't realize when I selected Jeff, Jeff Gordon that that kind of revealed the next thing that we were going to talk about, uh, which is actually the eSports drivers being in the game. Really? What the hell is this? Now, I don't care if they add extra stuff like this, right? But this, notice, this is free. This is not... Now, um, you're not going to, you guys aren't going to be seeing them in career mode, um, but they are all selectable, or uh, uh, the ones that we have are selectable at the moment. We're still... Key, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second, but... Pay attention to the paint schemes, right? I actually like these paint schemes. And m most of these paint schemes actually look better than half of the, the regular uh, paint schemes for the AI. So I love the way these cars look. It doesn't look bad to me. I love the paint schemes. But they said you can't use this in career mode. This is only for online. Working on all of that kind of stuff, but... Uh, yeah, you, again, you will see these paint guys schemes. in career mode, but they're selectable online and in quick race. Is that, is that right? Am I getting that right, Elliot? Yep, they're for use in single player and for online. I stand corrected. You could use it in single player. Okay. I like the way these look for the most part. These paint schemes look a lot better than a lot of the regular paint schemes, in my opinion. And um, so basically, if you wanna, if you wanna play as your pro league guy, you. I don't have anything against these these people, right? They, I, I, they're great people. I don't have anything against people who like esports. I just don't like that this stuff is included in the game. For free. This is free, but templates are part of DLC. Look at how good these cars look. And ask yourself, and there's a lot of these cars, by the way. 
you can do that. I think we still have some old ones in there, so we're showing off a little bit more than we can show. But uh, it'll be all the Season 2 guys minus Penske currently. Um, Penske has... Uh, oh, I like that one. Decided to not. That looks awesome. That looks fucking awesome. This looks better than 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 Ryan New any of Ryan Newman's regular cars. This is creativity. Why can't you show this level of creativity in the paint booth? Why can't we have uh, templates that have these designs on them? Imagine being able to change these colors and have these crazy designs, and being able to change the color of the wheel. Like, I actually. I know a lot of people are traditionalists and they're not going to like this new look. This is something that NASCAR is considering in the future. This is not too bad. I, I actually, the way these cars are rendered looks good, but it pisses me off, man. You got to pay for the extra templates, which we don't know what they're going to look like, but they took the time and it's a lot of cars. A lot of these guys in the game, they took the time to get, Make sure this is in the game. But there are all these other areas in the game where, eh, you know what? We didn't have the time. It's a lot going on. But they make sure that they get the eSports stuff in the game. That tells you that their priorities are not in the right order. Now, it might be the right order for them if their main focus is eSports. And it, that's what it seems to me, that this company, Motorsport Games, this is really their main goal. There's nothing I can do about it or any of us can do about it. If that's their main goal, it is what it is. You know, I there's only so much you can I can complain about it. This is a decision. They're going through with it. There, there's nothing that's going to dissuade them from this except like just failing as a business but they can still flesh out the career mode like i said codemasters they manage to do both right they're involved in esports they do the online they do all that stuff but they still make sure to deliver when it comes to the career mode and the offline stuff so you can do both so I'm not saying, A, because of this, you're never going to get what, what you know, the game should be. But right now, you know, where they are, the priorities are off. Nobody, who cares about these esports guys? And again, I'm not attacking them. I'm sure they're great people. But really, when you buy these games, what's more important to you? More customization options, more templates, more uh, uh, content for the career mode, or promoting this esports thing and having a bunch of people I've never heard of. Not one of these people. I do love these paint schemes. So that's pretty cool. I, I gotta admit, but why? You couldn't add any templates. We got to wait for that and you got to pay extra. But you were able to do this. And make sure it's part of the main game. They're not saying this is DLC. You got to pay extra for this. They make sure that the eSports stuff. It's make sure it's in the game. That bothers me. Look at the creativity here. So these guys are capable. That's what fucking pisses me off. And you see the templates that are in the career, in the in the paint booth. There's no creativity there. You could tell that stuff is rushed. It's it's so bland. Look at this. Look at all of these schemes. They all look good. Not be displayed. So we're we're still working on this. This isn't finished by any means. Um, but we uh, we do plan on having the perfect they all look guys good. in. Uh, as far as season two goes, yeah, a lot of fun, and it's just a lot of uh, it's just extra extra schemes to choose from as well. So, um, for all you guys that have a particular team that you're a big fan of, you know, it's just more stuff to choose from. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, 
to people enjoying that as well. Uh, and then let's see, we got a couple more just small things here. We're about to wrap up here, guys. Um, that car looks good. And you guys know I hate Kyle Busch, but now here's a weird thing. I'm sure they're gonna fix this, and I'm sure other people have pointed it out. This is a Ford body and nose, but it's got a Camry uh, wrap over it. That's not the only car I've seen like that, but I'm sure this is an early build. They're going to fix this. The car looks good, though, but yeah, you know, they're going to fix that. Thank you for tuning in, um, but we got a couple more things here. We did want to mention, uh, I, d I wanted to mention specifically because I know this is something that we've gotten from the community quite a bit. Uh, which is the ability to disable rivals, um, which is, I know, some we've, we've gotten some complaints about that. Uh, All right. You can uh, hide the cockpit wheel, which is great. I'm going to do that. I didn't know this was in there. I should have picked that up on the last video. I did not. And you could disable rivals. So I'm definitely doing that. So talk about disabling rivals. Yeah, so, well, you can see two things here. There's hide cockpit wheel and disable rivals. Um, so I'll cover both pretty quick. Uh, the cockpit wheel is similar to how you would play a sim um, because the wheel is set on an animation rotation of when you turn your wheel and it doesn't always line up appropriately or someone that is playing on a wheel doesn't want to see that. Um, we've just added that ability. That's for console and for PC players. Um, you know, if you're playing on a wheel, you can That's good. turn that off and just see kind of the dash and what's going on there. Um, and then the disable rivals is, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I've never personally had an issue with it. Maybe I just try to race clean, but a lot of people. Those of you who've seen me, uh, do gameplay videos, you guys know I'm a, I'm a, I go out of my way to race clean. I'm not one of these gamers that you see just ramming their way through the field and just smashing the AI out of the way. And I can tell you that no matter how clean you race, you're going to eventually maybe get one or two rivals. I've never had more than like two rivals at once. So I am a clean racer. But once you get a rival, it's almost impossible to get them to stop trying to wreck you. So... People seem to uh, complain that the rivals really don't like you after they become a rival. <laughs> maybe you guys should just apologize more in the text. <laughs> I don't know, but... Uh... I apologize a thousand times after every race it doesn't change anything so so we've we've added the functionality of being able to disable them and all that does is basically allow you to play without rivals um so you don't have to Thank deal you. with them constantly trying to hit you off the track and then run into you so uh you know that is that is a functionality that i think a lot of people really wanted out of the career mode um and it's now in there thank you one last thing. All right. Okay. One last thing. To spectating races. So all of you league racers and league admins and broadcasters out there, uh, this is something in particular that you will be interested in. But go ahead and talk about the improvements to spectating, Elliot. So, yeah, we added a lap counter, and um, oh. I'm going to say picker. Um, it, it doesn't show intervals, but your spectator cam will at least show you what lap they are on and who is leading second, third, fourth, and so forth. So, basically, you can, uh, you can actually see what's going on. It won't tell you if they're one or two seconds ahead or behind, but you can at least see the order instead of just driver numbers and driver names. That's a good thing. I don't care much about online, but this is important stuff. And now at least you know who's in what place. Now, he said there's no uh, interval times uh, where like you're 2.2 seconds behind and stuff like that. That is something that I want them to implement in future games, of course, right? You got to keep getting it better. But this is good. I, this is going to make people happy. You should know who's in what place know what lap it is uh so that's a good thing um a lot of the things that i saw that you know we saw here today and they talked about are good things right but there are certain things that just really not not good you know the templates be charging extra for that that's not cool 
but I'm not buying DLC. I'm just not doing it. You know, I, I think I'm doing more than enough by buying the game and supporting them. I want to give these guys the, the benefit of the doubt, and I want to give them a chance with the next gen, building the game from scratch, to show us what they can do. Now, when you look at all of these esports, the whole section with the esports cards and stuff like that, those the way those, those, those schemes are rendered, and, and, and I mean, it shows that these guys do, when they really want to do something, when the motivation is there, they can do it. And the motivation is to promote this esports thing. So those schemes look better than most of the regular NASCAR schemes. Those cars look good. But... You know, they made sure that esports part of stuff, you know, is in the game. It's available to you at no extra charge. But templates, and the templates that we have, I mean, it's a joke. Uh, I think I'm being fair to these guys. Let me know if I'm not. So, moving on from that, I'm going to call this a finished. Let me know your thoughts, guys.